the house of the Lord. It's good to be here. Thank God for this church. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, things that decay, things that tarnish, things that go get old with the use of them, with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Finally tonight, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Getting in verse 25, or reading verse 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate with self-control in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. And I want to use these three portions of Scripture and we'll bring them together with the help of the Lord for you tonight. Maybe you're wondering, what do these have to do with one another? Well, they do. We want to preach about giving God our best. Giving God our best. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. We'll ask His blessing tonight. Ask Him to bless the message tonight. Just to remind you not to stand, but we pray, please. Father, we're grateful. Be in your house one more time. Let us listen to your word. Now I have to say one thing about this church. My wife and I I love being here. We truly love the congregation. We don't just say that. That's not just something that you say. We don't say it. Just say it anyway. There may be people that are that way. We truly love the congregation. This is one of the most giving groups of people that we have had the privilege of pastoring. You've got to understand the kind of ministry that we came out of. We came out of a ministry where you were the one that was always doing the giving, always doing the serving, and always uh, the one that was being considerate of others and trying to take care of them, do things for them. And we're to be that way. We're all servants. We're ministers. That word means a servant. And we came out of ministries where that's what we did. We always took care of them, always provided and, and uh, endeavored to be a blessing to them. And there were many young people who were not taught to be that way in return, but you loved them anyway. That's right, yeah. Okay? There were times that the birthdays would come and go. We would celebrate their birthdays, but maybe they knew about my wife's, not even a card. Even Christmases where nothing was given, she would serve them and cook for them, and we would do things for them. And, you know, it's not that we hold any kind of grudge, it's not that way, but nonetheless we're people, and sometimes those things hurt, because you give yourself... And it's not reciprocated, but you do it anyway, you do it as unto the Lord. Amen. And God has put us in a place where people are very giving in return. And we have multiple birthdays around here. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's birthday. Some people get two or three birthdays. Yes, <laughs> and I thank God for a very giving congregation. We appreciate that. Something that my wife shared with me, I don't think it's original with her, I think that's what David said. So. And that statement is, you can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. And we know that God gave his best, didn't he, when he gave his son Jesus. He didn't give Moses, he didn't give uh, uh, some other prophet, he didn't give some other man of God, he didn't give Abraham, okay? 
God gave His only begotten Son to die on the cross for you and I to pay for our sin. Amen? God gave His best when He gave Jesus for you and I. He could have let things continue on as they were. He could have let man just die in his sin. He could have required a man to live under some law that he could not keep and never would have attained to God's salvation. But he didn't do that. The right time, the Bible tells us, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, born under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. He sent his Son, Jesus, to buy us back, brother and sister. Amen? Because nothing else was good enough to pay for our sin. Now, there are many, there's been some that have come to church here. They want to stay up under the law. The law is not good enough. Okay? God didn't, record, didn't intend for the law to be some final thing to make a way for you and I to come back to God. It was just a shadow of good things to come. Hallelujah, the good thing. The good thing, the good one has come. It wasn't the very image of the things. And it can never take away sin. The Bible teaches us this. It's not possible for the blood of bulls and of goats to take away sin. But Jesus came into the world and he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou had no pleasure. Then said I, Jesus, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me. To do thy will, O God. And he came to offer himself, brother and sister. Okay, to give himself. Not only did the Father give his Son, but the Son willingly gave his life as a sacrifice, brother and sister. The sacrifice that we needed to pay for our sin. Not only to be forgiven, but that sin could be destroyed in the lives of of men and women. He came to destroy the works of the devil. He gave himself. God the Father gave of the Son and he gave of himself. Jesus gave of himself when he gave his life for you and I. He is that sacrifice for our sin. We have examples that were intended to teach us about what Jesus would do, and I think of one. I think of one concerning Abraham. How that he waited many years for the promise of his son. And finally the promise came to fruition, and he had a son, and they called him Isaac, which means laughter. That son brought joy to him and Sarah. He brought laughter to their lives. But there came a time when he was tried, brother and sister, and the Bible tells us that he was to offer up Isaac. That he had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him from the dead. Even from, raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure. And we talk about Abraham and we talk about faith. This man had faith in God. Brother and sister, he and Sarah were, not, were unable to have a child. And from that deadness, God brought, God brought forth a child to them. It was a miracle, but it was a keeping of the promise of the word of Almighty God. And Abraham had faith to the extent that he believed that God, if he made him go through with offering up Isaac, that God would raise him from the dead. Yes. God didn't make him go through with it. God, as he was lifting up the knife, said, Now I know. Told him to do the child no harm. And there was a ram caught in the thicket. Abraham had already said, The Lord will provide himself a sacrifice. And that's what he has done for you and I. He has provided a sacrifice, brother and sister. A lamb nailed to a cross. A lamb 
that shed His blood and gave His life for you and I. Proving God's love to you and I. He gave of Himself. Well, the question is now to you and I. He gave so much when He gave His Son. His Son gave everything when He gave His life. There are others that we know of. We can read about people throughout history. People maybe that we didn't even know. People maybe who have gone before us that absolutely laid down their lives so that we could be saved. Yes. Amen. Brother and sister, how about you and I? Are we willing to give our best to the Lord? Yes. He's given His best for you and I. Amen. Are we willing, as we read there, out of Romans chapter 12, to give our life a living sacrifice, holy or completely, and acceptable, which is acceptable unto God. A living sacrifice, a life to, that is given to the Lord. You know, there are many who would say, I'd be willing to lay down my life for Jesus. I would be willing to die for Jesus and for my Christian faith. Well, yes, but brother and sister, are we willing to live for our yes. Christian faith? Yes. Are we willing to live for Jesus? Are we willing to live the life in this world, brother and sister, and to be the example that God wants us to be, to do the work that God needs us to do, a living sacrifice, a life that is given to the Lord, just as Jesus was willing to do, and we willing to say, we've said it, Many times before, we just preached about the Garden of Gethsemane and how it was a place of crushing. Are we willing to let our will be crushed? Are we willing to let our plans be crushed? Are we willing to say, like Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done? Yes, yes, Lord. A living sacrifice. Holy. Allowing our lives to be whole. To be sacred. To build the law fully and wholly unto God. Every aspect of our life. Every part of it, brothers and sisters. No, no secret place that we are holding back. No no place like this. God will let God have so much. I remind, I'm reminded of someone who came to church. And uh, I understand they have a, a rough schedule. And whatever the case may be. But as they left, they made the statement, well, I came. Like they were doing God a favor. Brother and sister, God is the one that is doing us a favor. That's right. Huh? Right. Brother and yeah. sister, the least that we can do is come to the house of the Lord and worship God. Brother and sister, we can do so much more than that, and we should. Yeah. All right? We shouldn't have just a Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon religion. We have to have a life that is holy and completely given over to God. Yeah. God is not a pastime. God is not secondary. God is more important than anything else in our lives. Yeah. And if He's not, we have our priorities wrong. We have our priorities wrong. But God is not more important than anything else. Brother and sister, this is our reasonable service. It is reasonable for God to ask us to give ourselves to Him wholly and completely. We are to serve God this way. We are to strive, as we read to you, for the mastery. For the mastery. We don't master things by doing them haphazardly, by doing them just occasionally, brother and sister. If you want to master something, you've got to give yourself to it. Yes. You've got to give yourself to it. And we have examples of those who give themselves. I watched something today. I watched something today. It was uh, some swimming. It was, I don't know what competition it was. But these folks could swim. And they were swimming like fish. They were so fast. Swimming up and down. They had to go at four times, I think, each one. 50 meter pool. They had to do 200 meters. It was a relay. Uh, 800 meters total. And it was all, you know, the nations were there, the, the U.S. and Australia and Canada and China and, and New Zealand and all these people were competing against it, one another. And at first, uh, uh, Canada was way out in front. Everybody thought that they were going to win. But then this girl from the United States jumped in the pool. She took off like a dolphin. And she made up a bunch of uh, ground. And then the last girl, well, the U.S. got in there and she... 
got in the lead and they ended up winning. And I think they set some kind of world record or something. Well, they didn't get that good by maybe going to the pool once a week. They have to practice. They have to give themselves to it. They do it to obtain a corruptible crown. Yeah, they may get a gold medal. Okay? Brother and sister, but you know one of these days, who knows, uh, when they leave this life, who's going to get that, where it's going to end up. Maybe it'll end up in a pawn shop somewhere down on Grant Road. But you know God's got an incorruptible crown for you yes. that no one can take from you. Amen. God has given it. God has it for you and I, brother and sister. We are striving for the mastery. Brother and sister, we can, we can absolutely become better for Almighty God. And God needs us to. Just because you've never done something, never been successful at a certain thing, doesn't mean that you can't be. Can I tell you something? Do you know when I was in high school, I had an inferiority complex? There's no way that I would get up in front of people and talk. I spent my time leaning against a locker trying to look cool. <laughs> This was like, this was the sum of a lot of my communication. <laughs> you remember them days? Oh, yes. Sir. Huh? But you know what, brother and sister? Jesus saves us. And he changes us. And he puts it in our hearts. I've got more for you. I need you to climb up higher. I need you to go deeper. There's some work that I have for you to do. Come on, church. Huh? God is the one, and God still calls people, and God still equips people, and God still, brother and sister, gives men and women the sufficiency that they need to do the work of Almighty God. Yeah. We're talking about, Sister Seen, about over this hill. We're talking about leaving this life. Okay? Who's going to take our place when it's our time to go? Who's going to step up? Come on, church. It's right now. Huh? If the Lord can tarry for another thousand years, who from the next generation is going to stand up and say, I will serve the Lord. I will preach the gospel. I will tell men and women about my Savior. Yes. 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 I will stand in the gap. I'll take up the hedge. Come on, church. God is looking for us, brother and sister, to step up, to strive for the mastery. We're not to beat against the air. We're not to run with like we have no goal. But we are to put forth diligent effort to master or to accomplish the goal. Brother and sister, uh, we're going to inherit an incorrupt, a incorruptible crown. 2 Corinthians 5 and 9. Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. I understand that I'm not saved by my works. My works didn't save me. Jesus saved me. But now I want my works of my life to be pleasing in His sight. I want them to be accepted of Him. It's no longer my life. I gave it to Him. Know what the Bible teaches us? We are to glorify God in our body and in our spirits, which are God's. We've been bought with a price, brother and sister. We've been bought with a price. We do this, brother and sister, by giving ourselves to the Lord, by by submitting ourselves to His will for our life. People do it for the natural things, as we shared. Gave you the example of those swimmers. Well, sister, no doubt they practice and practice and practice some more. And they do it for an earthly and a worldly crown. But, brother and sister, we're not only doing it for a crown, we're doing it for the Lord, and we're doing it to reach other people. Do we realize, do we understand that people that are lost without Christ are going to spend eternity separated from Him? If they don't come to Him when they have the opportunity in this life, they're going to be forever lost and separated from
from the Lord. What are we doing with the message of, of deliverance that we have? What are we doing with the message of salvation that God has placed into our hands, church? Are we just keeping it to ourselves? Are we letting people know? We need to let people know, brother and sister. We need to let people know. I understand that everyone is different. Okay, We have different callings. We have different gifts. People have different abilities. Okay, We understand all of that. We have an example in the Bible of a woman who didn't have a whole lot. The Bible tells us about this woman and that she was there uh, near in, in the temple and, and Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast the money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. They had more. Understand there's people that are able to do more. There are people that have more. But that didn't stop this woman from giving all that she had. It may, may not have been that much compared to others, but it was everything that she had. Yes. You know, there's nothing that irks me more that people, people that are able to do a lot of things and they look down on others that maybe can't do what they do. Maybe the other person has some physical limitation. Whatever the case may be. Okay? But brother and sister, that person may be giving more. They may be giving, they may, it may be harder for them to do what they're doing. It may not be as much as someone else. But it, but really, brother and sister, it actually may be more. Because they're giving out of the little bit that they have. I believe that's what the Lord is trying to show us. Hey, maybe you can't do what somebody else can do, but you can do what you can do. And you do it as under the Lord. And you do your best as under Jesus. And Jesus will see it just like He saw this woman. And He commended her. Hey, he commended her before these disciples. She was willing to give God her all, brother and sister. That's what God is looking for, that attitude. God, I'm going to give you my best. God, I'm not going to give you the leftovers. I'm not going to give you the dregs, God. I'm going to give you the best of my life. You're not, you're not some pastime, God. You're not secondary, God. The other things are not more important than you. And we're not mad at anybody. We love you. God loves you. We appreciate you, as we already said when we began this service. Okay? But brother and sister, Jesus deserves better from all of us than second place in our lives. He's been too gracious. He's been too merciful. He's been too good. He gave his life. He's given too much for you and I to treat him like he's some second-hand, secondary thing. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He is to be our all in all, brother and sister. We are willing. We need to be willing to give ourselves. I'm getting ready to close this quote. To the Lord. To the Lord. This woman gave, though it wasn't much, she couldn't give the amount that others could, but it was all she had. And we come with that attitude, God, I'm going to give you my best. I'm going to give you my best. Brother and sister, God looks down upon you and I and he sees, really, it's not so much the action, but it is the condition of the heart. That desire, brother and sister, to, to give God our best, to love God in return, to let Him have that preeminence in our lives. Tonight as we bow our heads and we close our eyes in reverence to the Lord. She begins to play and sing. We're going to come and pray. Brother and sister, let's give God our best.
God bless you tonight is our prayer. She sings, she pleads. We come tonight. Presence of Almighty God. 